I'm Nick Snow, watching Government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. The question was how much influence the federal government could exert to make U.S. oil, gas, and electricity infrastructure less vulnerable to weather events linked to global climate change and more resilient during such events. The answer? Not that much, and only indirectly. In general, the federal government has a limited role in directly adapting energy infrastructure to the potential impacts of climate change, the Government Accountability Office said in a March 4th report. Key federal entities can play important supporting roles that influence private companies' infrastructure decisions, it continued. Those federal entities, quote, are initiating steps to begin adaptation efforts within their respective missions, end quote, the report said. But private companies which own energy production, transmission, and distribution operations make the final choices. Federal entities can influence those decisions by providing information, regulatory oversight, technology research and development, and market incentives and disincentives the Congressional Government Watchdog Service concluded. It said assessments by the National Research Council, one of the National Academies of Science, and the U.S. Global Climate Change Research Program found that domestic energy infrastructure, quote, is increasingly vulnerable to a range of climate change impacts, particularly in areas prone to severe weather and water shortages, end quote. Oil and gas production and processing operations are often located near U.S. coasts, exposing them to severe weather and rising sea levels, the report noted. Fuel transportation and storage infrastructure, including pipelines, barges, railways, and storage tanks, is susceptible to damage from severe weather, melting permafrost, and increased precipitation, it added. Severe weather or water shortages can affect power generation, while transmission and distribution systems can feel growing pressure from rising temperatures, the report said. It said options to reduce such vulnerability fall into two broad categories, hardening and resiliency. Hardening measures involve physical changes that improve the durability and stability of specific pieces of infrastructure. For example, elevating and sealing water-sensitive equipment, making it less susceptible to damage, it explained. Resiliency measures, such as backup generators, allow energy systems to continue operating after being damaged and help them recover more quickly, the report indicated. Companies which produce, transmit, and distribute energy obviously have examined their systems since Hurricanes Katrina and Rita in 2005 and Superstorm Sandy in 2012 to find specific ways to make them less vulnerable. GEO's report said the U.S. Department of Energy, Environmental Protection Agency, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and other agencies also have begun talking about project-specific activities, such as research and development, and evaluating siting and licensing decisions under their jurisdiction, as well as through broader agency-wide assessments and interagency cooperation. Government's role here may be limited, but it's not idly standing by. That's watching government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.